in right on schedule. The Bullhead Detectives. Okay, we're back for more dino feasting, and now it's time for the delicious second course. Better have your Pepto-Bismol handy, because we're going into the belly of the beast to find out what the sauropods ate. But first, a quick stop for a snack at the diner where it's business as usual. Eating, drinking, and more eating. Hey, you like some fries with your salt? Even though french fries are the most popular vegetables with kids, there's a huge variety of other plants to eat nowadays. But back in the time of the sauropods, there wasn't nearly as much choice, which raises the question, what was on the menu for diner vegetarians? Let's turn to the mighty bone of botany for more details. The history of plant life on Earth started millions and millions of years ago with these little one-celled dealy jobbies. You gotta start small. Tiny. But these plants were ambitious, and they kept getting more and more complicated. And at the same time, the animals that ate the plants kept getting bigger and bigger. By the time our pals the sauropods came along, the menu was still mostly just ferns, palms, and other lame stuff like that. That doesn't sound all that succulent. No kidding. It wasn't until about a hundred million years ago that flowers started blooming, which eventually led to stuff like fruits and vegetables. And finally, you could get a decent fruit smoothie. And what you see here is live footage of my stomach digesting a very decent, very recent fruit smoothie. Sam, gross! Oh, oh no, wait! It's not my stomach. It's paleo detective Peter Dodson stomping on some grapes. Peter's picked up the trail of today's mystery out in wine country. But he's not whining when he asks how the giant sauropods stuff their faces. How did they get it all down? Well, if they eat very succulent foods like these grapes, which I'm stumping on, the grapes are very easy to crush and release the nutrition. But there were no grapes back in the sauropods' day, and very few succulent foods. They had to eat very tough, fibrous foods. How did they deal with this? Deal with it? With all the fibrous leaf material that we ate? What, are you kidding me? We ate rocks! By themselves, leaves are hard to digest. The stomach is a very muscular organ, so as the stomach churned a great mass of stones rubbed against each other, and they rubbed against the plant material, too. And as they tumbled, the plant material was nicely broken up into uh, small fragments, which are e much more easily digested. And this vat of fermenting grapes works a lot like a sauropod stomach. A 70-ton sauropod dinosaur is an enormous animal, and the size of its fermentation vat would have been staggering. We reckon it was somewhere around 10 tons. That would have been equivalent to 30 barrels of wine. 30 barrels! All that eating and fermenting could give a guy a serious stomachache, right, Peter? Fermentation is a process, which a chemical process, which produces large quantities of gas. And our giant sauropod was fermenting 10 tons of plant material. It must have produced prodigious quantities of gas. In a word, it produced wind. <laughs> oh, gee! Oh, get the air pressure off! Oh, wet. oh, God, what did he eat? Good time to check in with Bob Barker. Oh, please! Oh, for the love of God! Well, you know, if you're a dinosaur, or a cow, or an elephant, or a gorilla, or a human vegetarian, if you're eating fibrous leaves and nothing but leaves, you're going to produce gas. You've got to chew the leaves, you've got to swallow the leaves. The leaves have to sit in, in your stomach and produce bubbles and release the nutrients that you're going you're gonna to absorb. And then it's just going to be gas and gas and gas. Not loud popping farts, pop, 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 but just a all day long. So remember, everyone, never sneak up on a sauropod from behind. Excellent advice. And now that we've had our salad with Brontosaurus, let's try and answer the question, what did the carnivores eat? Well, bonehead detective Jim Barlow says they had it a lot better. And that's no bull. Right now, I'm rather glad I'm not a plant. There's plenty, but no rushing here. And an herbivore like these cattle is going after a lot of spread out, dispersed, not in themselves very nutritious kinds of food. A carnivore on the other hand, easy, watch the foot. Uh, a carnivore, on the other hand, is um, going after big packets of food that is a very high quality, a lot of protein content, a lot of energy content, 
This guy, for example, looks delicious. But getting a meaty meal back in dino days wasn't easy. Predators had it extra tough. When they went out for a bite, sometimes their dinner would bite back. If a Tyrannosaurus were lucky enough to kill a Triceratops, it would get to feed on an animal about the same size as it is. It would probably gorge itself, you know, guts flying everywhere, bones crunching, the big teeth ripping out the flesh. Your worst nightmare. It would probably eat most of its own body weight, I would guess. And then if it were cold-blooded, it doesn't have to eat anything for a very long time. Could, that single meal might last it months, perhaps even an entire year, before it'd have to go looking for food again. But Dr. Bob wants to roll the tape back on that one. Now, if T-Rex was just a great big, cold-blooded Komodo dragon lizard, maybe it could make one good kill, a Triceratops, and live off it for a whole year. But wait a minute. If you look at T-Rex bones under the microscope, baby bones, you see that it grew not like a lizard, but a hot-blooded bird really fast. So a mother Rex would have to be feeding the little baby Rex every day. Okay, that means the mother Rex and the dad Rex have to go out hunting at least every week, bring back enough meat to feed that hot, blooded chick a couple of times each day. If you're going to be a hot-blooded, successful Rex parent, you've got to hunt, you've got to kill, you've got to do it regularly. Well, any way you cut it, getting a good meal in dino days was no picnic. If you were a plant eater, you had to pick out on leaves and twigs round the clock. And if you were a meat eater, every meal was a fight to the death. But a dino's got to eat. And next, we'll take a look at the most important utensil of all, the teeth. Back in a million minutes.